I'm Peter Johnson from henrythornton.com. Been a while since I've sent out this sort of message, uh, but it's been a tough and busy time and you've got to do what you've got to do. But here we are to talk about the global financial crisis that I'm sure have been bothering all of us. But first, it's appropriate, I think, to acknowledge the inauguration of President Obama, his brilliant campaign, the stellar team he's got together, and his inauguration address, which soberly faced the massive problems that he's got to deal with. We wish him luck because if he does well, we'll all do well. Um, and if he does badly, it is going to be a long and very difficult recession. Indeed, it's so bad that people are talking comparisons with the 1930s, Great Depression. Now, these, de these comparisons are potential but not actual. There are three main things that are meant to stop us falling into a Great Depression and indeed to show that we've learnt. Firstly, monetary policy has been enormously eased. Secondly, fiscal policy is in the process of being eased and in a more or less globally coordinated way. And thirdly, the world, is, the world leaders have pledged to avoid sliding into protectionism. Now, all these things are happening, but the world economy is still getting worse. The most recent news is the dramatic slowdown in the Chinese economy and indeed predictions that there'll be 50 million or even more unemployed workers, which will not be at all helpful for, for political stability as well as economic stability. In the, in the US, the Fed, whose chief studied the Great Depression, has slashed interest rates virtually to zero, slashed official rates virtually to zero, and has introduced something called quantitative easing that seems to involve swapping not so good private paper for good public paper. Now, I have no doubt that this will help, but there are two problems. Firstly, the money supply in the US is set to really rocket upwards, and we all know that that causes inflation, even if this seems like a not very sensible comment to make at this time. But the issue is, will the Fed be able to reel in the excess money as recovery happens? If not, we're set for more inflation and more bubbles in asset markets. In fact, if you're really a pessimist, which I'm not, you can imagine the, uh, the, the stop-start nature of monetary policy. We had, a, we had a boom leading to bubbles after Greenspan slashed rates in the early part of this century. Uh, we then had some tightening, we then, we've then again had dramatic easing. You can see the seeds of instability in all this. But secondly, and of more immediate concern, the, f the world's financial markets are still clogged up despite all this bailout for the banks and despite all this expansionism. It's, a, it's caused by a loss of trust, but what can be done practically to fix it is I'm sure one of President Obama's great questions. Then we come to fiscal policy. Now, President Obama is attempting to get a massive stimulus package through Congress. One imagines he will. He's got the votes, the Democrats have the votes in the Congress and everyone thinks what he's doing is a good idea. And indeed it is. But there's a number of subjects being debated about what sort of fiscal expansion um, sugar hit handouts to people in need will certainly get a temporary hit to, to consumption. But is really our problem is too much consumptionism and too much over lending and over borrowing for a long time. So sugar hit bailout is pretty dangerous practice and likely in the end to be just not affordable. Secondly, there's various sorts of infrastructure, roads, ports, um, rail improvements um, and the more in, intangible kinds of innovation which involves, as President Obama said, giving science back its rightful place 
but also health and um, education spending. Now those sorts of infrastructure expansions will certainly add to capacity as well as stoking up demand and that's a safer form of fiscal expansion and one more likely to be effective. And thirdly of course there are tax cuts, um, deep dyed conservatives which in economic terms includes me point out that tax cuts enables the people to decide how they want to spend their money or whether they want to save it. But more generally in the great fiscal debate it's about expansionism versus restraint and indeed a, an insightful journalist has written today that President Obama will get the advice about expansionism but his own instincts are about restraint so there's a debate still going on there. Thirdly, um, the issue of protectionism, the leaders are saying they're going to avoid it, the international agencies are saying we should avoid protectionism and in terms of crude barriers to trade I'm sure we will but it's got to be acknowledged that bailing out banks and bailing out motor car companies and any other sorts of bailouts are a form of protectionism and this is to be watched very carefully and avoided to the extent possible. Now I'm going to sign off now, there are many many big issues that have been grappled with in, but in those in the economic sphere are the ones that I worry about most. As I said, we wish President Obama well. I suggest that people should remain pretty careful with their investments. We're a long way from the bottom of this, this slowdown. Um, but the two positives are if you've got cash and if you've got courage, at some point there'll be some tremendous equity market bargains and some great fortunes will be made. Good luck and we'll talk again soon.